Quite as many interesting matchups as NA, I don't think. But eh, there's still some intriguing ones. There's a lot of teams sandwiched in at 3-3 three and three over in EU. So you got Schalke and G2. It's basically, you're separating the contenders from the pretenders in week four for EU. G2 looked a lot better uh, last week. 2-0 to that one. We'll see how they match up against Schalke. Vitality's the talk of the town in EU. And Splice is a team that has looked pretty good or terrible. Uh, so we'll see if they're actually a contending team. Giants at 4-2. and two. Are they actually a top-tier team in EU? I think this is the last time we see them in uh, the top three, this split. <laughs> I think these are some good matchups again. As you've said, they're not quite the high-profile ones. You know, these big battles that we're going to see in North America this week. But I think when you're talking about the EU LCS, it's definitely going to be who's for real. You look at that first match with G2 and Schalke, these are teams that do need to prove that you're going to be elite. They're sitting kind of right in the middle, three and three, and we haven't seen the most impressive of performances from them. So definitely an important match to get the better of your opponent and pick up that win and keep climbing the leaderboard there. I think that G2 will be able to do it. I've got enough faith in this roster, still improving, still figuring things out. And again, the synergy, we bring it up a lot, the synergy that this roster needs to develop together, these, uh, the cohesiveness of knowing who's called to follow when is definitely very important. And I feel like G2 is working towards that again, like other teams are, and will propel them to a victory over Schalke. Yeah, I mean, these two squads have two remaining players that were on their rosters from 2017. A lot of changes. <laughs> Upset and perks. Uh, G2 played a super clean week last week. They had three deaths across two games. Yeah. Three team deaths. What? Not exciting, though, but no. they still clean. You can't argue with clean. I mean, they played a much more improved macro game. They didn't have, they didn't get double digit kills, I don't think, in either matchup and still were able to get pretty sizable gold leads. Yeah, one of these wins is against H2K, yeah. which, yeah. G2 was just playing so clean that I was waiting for the guy from Stranger Things to show up and say, hey, it's a tied at, but it never happened. Never happened. G2, too clean. I think that, again, they're going to continue on this performance improving and will take advantage of Schalke. Yeah, I like G2 in this matchup as well. Schalke... They looked really good against Giants. Nuke Duck was playing out of his mind uh, in that game on that uh, AP Galio upset. Had some questionable flashes, but he <laughs> yeah. still did the most damage in the game. And had I like seeing him more aggressive rather than just sitting back, which you kind of saw in some of these other games. I want to see him on these hyper carries where he can't take over a game. Uh, so they look good against Giants, but against Vitality, they just... Oh, my they goodness. Were, they were outclassed. They, did, yeah. they seemed lost. They were just losing objective trades left, right, and center. Vitality's getting free turrets here, free dragon there. Shulka, when there's not team fights going around, they just look like they didn't know what they were doing. So that's something they've definitely got to fix in terms of mid-game shot calling and uh, just how to play the game, really. But I, I think they'll improve there. Well, I, I, they better hope so if they're going to take down G2. And the only way I really do see them taking down G2, and it's, and it's nothing against Upset and the type of performance I think he can bring, you know, doing his best wild turtle impressions, going all aggressive and getting in there. But I think, again, it is going to have to be Nuke Duck. Nuke Duck will definitely have to step up his game once again like he has in the past couple of weeks if they ever want to beat G2 in this matchup. And I think that's going to be a tough ask going up against uh, Perks and especially, again, then having to withstand the pressure from Yanko. Uh, well, we talked about Vitality. They are, again, they're the, they're the most hyped team. They're the top of the standings. Right there. Five and one. It's kind of, it's getting harder and harder to argue that this team isn't for real. The team they're playing uh, this week, Vitality, it's not hard to argue if they're for real or not because I have no idea. They look so different yeah. from game to game. They're beating Misfits in a kind of sloppily played game, and then they're losing to these lower tier squads. And I'm not sure how they even have three wins. Outside yeah. of Kabi, the rest of the team is not performing right. that well. And the big problem that I've really had with Splice is in the mid lane. Niski has got to step up his performance. This is someone who came over from NA after absolutely kind of stunting is maybe a little bit too strong, but performing strong enough that he was absolutely taking advantage of the matchups against Bjergsen and Jensen, guys who are incredible performers in NA, historically speaking. 
And this is a guy who then came here and was expected to be among the best mid laners in, in Europe and be really aggressive. And we haven't seen that. It not absolutely has not shown up whatsoever. And it's been really something that Splice was counting on. Splice was counting on this guy being something that they can rely on. And it hasn't shown up yet. And I think that's why you're seeing them struggle. But when you talk about vitality and if they're the real deal, I don't know if their whole team is the real deal, but I can tell you two players that are absolutely the real deal right now. And that is Jazuki and Mini Trupax. They are unbelievably performing. The Italian and Portuguese man are going nuts for this team and are absolutely propelling them all the way to their victories. I've got Vitality winning another one. Yeah, I, I like Vitality too. There just seems to be an aura of excitement around the squad. It's a combination of these guys. You hear their comms, you see them after games. Doesn't matter who they're beating. They're fired up to beat these guys. Mini Troopax is firing out shots left, right, and center in any interview that he's yeah. doing and he's, he's learning from Gilius, he's man. He's learning from the Gilius, who's maybe the best at trash talking. He hasn't best, done much in his career. Definitely but, can be the best trash talker. Yeah. Uh, and you throw in a head coach in Yamato Cannon, who's just always fired up with these guys. And listen, Cabo Shard has looked much better than he did on Vitality. And it, it helps when you got guys like Jazuki and Mini Troopax taking a lot of that pressure off you. But I, I'm, I'm feeling the Vitality hype right now. I, I think they're going to be a legit team heading into playoffs. All aboard the Vitality hype train. I'm right there. All aboard. Now, of course, they'll probably go 0-2. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you can blame me for that one. Uh, last matchup to look out for in Week 4 is Fnatic against Giants. Uh, Fnatic looked a lot better last week. Reckless was playing more like his normal self. They should have beat Misfits, man. Oh. They should have oh, beat Misfits. My they goodness, had that game that in matchup. the bag. It ended up being a 60-plus minute slop <sighs> fest. And I feel good about Misfits, but that match didn't make me feel good about either one of those teams. That's the second time that it's kind of been like these hyped-up teams in Europe, and it just kind of turned into a mess before Fnatic and G2. That you ever, you ever order ugly. something for dinner, and, it, and you're like, yeah, I know this is going to be great. I've had it before. And then it gets to your table, and you're kind of like, well, what's this? I, this just doesn't look soggy. anything like that. Yeah, and you're like, oh. I don't want this at all. I wanted that was crunchy kind of that. wontons. These are soggy wontons. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what this, I was uh, expecting a lot from that game, and I didn't get what I wanted to see. Uh, so I'm definitely hoping to see better things from Fnatic. More, more of what we saw from them later in the week, a really strong performance from them, and what I really love to see. Again, a guy. I'm a guy who loves to see some Aurelian Soul gameplay, and I thought Caps definitely brought it to the table. He brought some really great positioning and some smart uh, management of his skills on Aurelian Soul. Really liked that for the team. It was really something that was necessary for them in order to get the victory over Rock Cat. Really liked his performance. And I think that against a Giants team, this is someone that you can count on to be a hard carry for your team. One of the things that Fnatic has definitely talked about before is finding ways to become uh, a better team and find victories without Reckless having to carry. Well, I think that this could could be a matchup where you find your carries doing the job for you other than Reckless. Yeah, and to start last week, you had Raw Cat and Giants facing off as two three and one teams at the top of the standings. After last week, Raw Cat definitely dropped off quite a bit. And I think you're seeing more closely what this team's actually gonna be going forward. And I think Giants are gonna follow suit there. Yes, they are four and two, but uh, I, I, I don't see them being a legitimate contender in the EU LCS, uh, I think Fnatic's gonna take the win against them, and it's probably gonna be the last time we see Giants uh, near the top of the standings. But hey, they performed, they've already exceeded my expectations for that squad for the entire LCS season. <laughs> Guys like Betsy looked like he did during some of the moments where people thought he was an up-and-coming star on Gambit. I was gonna say, Betsy looked pretty good, but I'm, I'm putting my money on caps this week. Yeah. Absolutely, and steal back again. Guy got MVP votes a few years ago. He's hopped from team to team, but been a pretty consistent carry uh, on each of those squads. But I think Fnatic's gonna take this one, and Giants might be going the route of Rocket, which is the wrong way uh, down the standings. Sliding down our power rankings next week. Hint, 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 hint. But I, I, I doubted Giants once, and uh, hey, they you started never out four and one, four and two. That's the beauty of best of ones. You never, never, never know. really know but at the exact same time, I think we've seen enough to say, hey, I don't think that these guys are winning a best of five against any one of these teams. So that's kind of the reason to really maybe doubt them a little bit. But hey, okay. we'll see.
we'll see. That's that's why you that's why you watch these games. Those are the main matches to look for. But I mean, there's going to be 20 games this weekend, as there is always uh, lots of action. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more esports content.